Welcome to the Asian Labor Sessions, a Google Hangout hosted by Asia Monitor Resource Center. For every gadget coming out, we hear stories of suffering, despair, and struggle of workers in the electronics industry. But how did it all start? Is the industry becoming better, or are we heading for the worst? We have invited guests to answer these pressing questions. We have Yvette, a former electronic worker in Silicon Valley. We have Ted Smith, international coordinator of the International Campaign for Responsible Technologies based in the USA. Amanda Hose, uh, co-founder of WorkSafe in USA. And Sanjeev Pandita, director of Asia Monitor Resource Center based in Hong Kong. Hi. Hello. Hi. Thank you, Noel. Hello. Hi. Hello, Noel. Thanks for doing this. Uh, Ted, can you please walk us through the history of the electronics industry? I moved to San Jose in 1972 at a time when we called this the the Valley of Water's Delight. It was an agricultural region. Um, and it was the home of the canning industry. And it was only beginning to develop as the home and birthplace of the electronics industry. Um, and during the 70s and 80s, the growth of the semiconductor industry and the computer industry took off. Uh, they called themselves the clean industry. People did not realize at the time that it was a chemical handling industry. And we didn't know a lot of the problems uh, until grassroots groups started looking into what, what was going on. And at that point, uh, we discovered that there were serious uh, worker health problems and also serious uh, community environmental pollution problems. So we, we have been documenting the footprint of high-tech development ever since, not only here in Silicon Valley, but as it moved out to other parts of the world also. Thank you, Ted. Uh, Yvette? You started working for the electronic industry way back. Why did you choose the industry? I was 18 years old, was becoming independent, wanted to work and be on my own, not depend on anyone. And I was proud to be an independent woman of the 70s. Mm -hmm. That was a big deal back then. So to get my own place and be able to support myself, that's what I did, and I was thankful for that. But I was naive back then too. Mm -hmm. 18 years old, a long time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you, Ben. I'm gonna show you a short clip of what was going on uh, way back in uh, the 70s. Electronics workers make products that revolutionize our lives. But for them, the price of progress may be their physical or mental health. Chemicals like arsenic, cyanide, and phosphine are used in making tiny chips of integrated circuitry. Many of the 235,000 women who make and assemble electronic components are faced with low starting wages, boring jobs, little job security, and industry threats to move overseas. So Yvette, uh, you started when you were 18. How did your work impact your yourself and your family? It impacted me where I was able to live on my own. And then when I got married, we had my first child. Unfortunately, he, my work uh, developmentally delayed and a long um, 35 years down, um, it's come to where we had to go with his needs. So a lot of ways we're dealing with people that didn't know how to accept my son in society, um, not knowing what was going on, you know, with him, but with our love. I mean, my son, he's still my son no matter what. But it's unfortunate why it had to be. 
I was exposed to a chemical um, grit, and that I smoked it, it smoked, inhaled every day in mm -hmm. a small room that just, I thought it was just stuffy in there. It, and it wasn't, it was all the chemical bill smelling. There was other nickel chemicals, beryllium. I mean, there were so many in there, and there was only two of us in the room. So I would go out of there to get air, which was not even better in the next room, mm -hmm. but uh, it was inhaling uh, eight to um, nine hours a day, six days a week. Yeah, I didn't know this. I just thought it was a stuffy room. It was, and it was chemicals I was smelling. And unfortunately, my son was smelling that. So mm -hmm. I worked night, and no one said that's not good for you. I thought I was doing my job, and I was doing it productively. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Yvette. Amanda, what about those workers who suffered like Yvette? Were they given compensation or the employers who did not follow standards, were they placed in jail? I'll take the last question first. I can't think of a single employer who's ever been put in jail for mm. taking action or failing to take action. Um, and do, do they give compensation? Uh, they don't voluntarily do that. Sometimes after a fight, you know, I've been involved in many, but it's possible to obtain some type of compensation for a worker who's harmed or a child of a worker. Mm -hmm. As much as I'm glad we're able to do that and try to lessen the burden, every time we are able to do that, it's because we're also able to show that what happened could have been prevented okay. and wasn't. And that's a very hard thing to live with if it's your child or your health. So that's one of the reasons we share these stories and hope that we can be better. Thank you, Amanda. Sanjeev, the industry has left the U.S. and now has moved to Asia. Has the industry learned its lessons from the scars it gave the workers of the U.S.? Well, no. I mean, if you want to answer, the short answer is no. I mean, we have seen, you know, after the industry moved from Silicon Valley, initially it moved to Korea, Taiwan, uh, Hong Kong, and exposed thousands of workers. I mean, to the similar chemicals what Hewitt was working on, and similar uh, situations. Uh, young women coming out of their homes, trying to find a job, and getting working in electronic industry. Uh, and now, of lately, we have seen the same industry now moving to Philippines, Indonesia, China, and you know, Asia is one of the largest manufacturing hub at present with largest number of workforce and predominantly feminized workforce employed in electronics and getting exposed to the same chemicals. You see, that is the irony. We are still getting exposed to the same chemicals what Yvette got, let's say, 25, 30 years back. So we are in this vicious time travel where industry is just moving geographically exploiting the most marginalized section of the society and creating profits for themselves. Thank you, Sanjeev. Now my question is, the electronics industry is big. It's really, really big and it's global. What can the workers, the grassroots movement do to affect change in this industry? One of, one of the things that we did in 2002 was to convene an international meeting to form a network called the International Campaign for Responsible Technology. We had about 60 people from around the world, mm -hmm. and we got together and we were telling each other stories about what was happening, and people understood that the same kinds of things that had happened here were happening in other places, and that created a real sense of solidarity. We came out of that meeting, we published a book called Challenging the Chip, which was compiled the stories of people from around the world, and since then, we've been building this international network to try to challenge the industry. Um, we recently had a meeting here in the San Francisco Bay Area, uh, again, with people from 15 different countries, and we have developed what we now call the challenge to the electronics industry, where we're challenging them to stop poisoning their workers, to stop polluting their communities, and to shift away from the very hazardous chemicals that they're using 
and to switch to safer materials, safer processes, and to protect the workers and to stop trying to um, keep the workers from organizing. We think that if the workers inside the plants and in the community residents also are aware of what's happening, if they have the right to know, and if they have the ability to organize to protect themselves, that that's going to be the benefit of everybody. So that's really what we think is, is necessary. And we think re we see a growing movement at this point to try to bring that about. Mm -hmm. I um, mean, just to add, I mean, two, 2002 was really a landmark meeting which Ted was talking about, you know, that helped to amalgamate different grassroots movement into this, you know, which is a really wonderful network, the International Campaign on Responsible Technology. Uh, in addition, you know, what we also are feel, what we need is a strong grassroots capacity build, you know, at ground in terms of mobilizing the victims. You see, we still have a huge problem in Asia about diagnosis. So like many people who are getting sick because of electronic industry don't even know they have been exposed and they're getting sick because of the industry. So we have a big challenge of capacity building, you know, and then mobilizing the victims movement so that the change can come from below. I'd like to add one more thing, and that is a lot of experience with workers believing that as long as the legal limit for exposures hasn't been exceeded, everything's fine. Not realize that they're not being told. Legal limits in the workplace have nothing to do with protection. Mm -hmm. They're vastly less protective than they should be, and there's no excuse. Part of the challenge we're talking about is requiring that workers get the same degree of protection as we expect in the community. It's a tremendous driver of changing this process and having a life cycle approach to chemicals because if the employer is obligated to keep the chemicals at a level that's health protective, they might consider that they can spend their money in a different way by simply getting rid of the hazardous material and keeping everybody safe. I know it's a big it's a big change, it's a paradigm shift or something, but this industry is always they're always up for it on this on this issue. It's long overdue, and I hope for as much support as possible in making it happen. One of the other myths is that people see the electronics workers wearing their little white bunny suits and think that those are there to protect the workers. But what we learned many, many years ago is that it has nothing to do with protecting the workers. They're there to protect the, the product, to try to keep the dust particles away from the product, and the workers themselves are getting exposed to the fumes that are in, in the factories. So. Um, I think as more and more people become aware of this and, and get involved, I think that the chances are better that we will be able to make the kinds of changes that we need. Thank you all. Uh, we are approaching the end of our program, but before we go, we're asking everybody what your parting messages to our audience. First, fighting for safe jobs and healthy families is worth it every day. Do something uh, and share this message. We'll all be better for it. Thank you. And mine would be enjoy your life, but protect yourself and protect your family. And just remember, you only have one life, so protect it. And I think I just want to say I, it is possible to make changes. We've made a lot of changes just with the small group of people that we are, and I think constantly of Margaret Mead, the famed anthropologist, who said, never doubt that a small group of people can make a difference. In fact, it's the only thing that ever has, and I think that we've been able to demonstrate that. AMRC is able to demonstrate that. Many of the groups in our networks are able to demonstrate that on a daily basis, and I think people just have to understand that and believe that working together we really can make a difference. Yeah, I'll just catch on what Ted said. I mean, of course, we are a small group of people, and but when we stay united, I think we can make change and we can get justice for all the victims. And as Mandy said, we can put all those people who put these workers at harm's way in jail, hopefully in future. Thank you all. And uh, before we end this hangout, greetings to all the electronic workers across the globe. Please check the Worker Struggle in Electronics Industry published by AMRC. We'll be putting the link below and the different uh, uh, resources you can get. So, hope you can join us in the
the next Asian Labor Session. Goodbye. Bye. 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 -bye. Bye, -bye.